to move the vote of thanks, Lord William Rees Mogg. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Lady Thatcher, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, I thought that was a truly wonderful speech. Uh, we all of us here uh, feel a great love and attach great importance to the Anglo-American relationship. I can't remember a speech which seemed to me to do more to bring together this feeling that we deal in the same ideas and that we come from the same history. And uh, I think that all of us feel extremely <coughs> grateful to the speaker for the speech he's made. There are three kinds of politicians and particularly perhaps three kinds of conservatives. There are those who love ideas and believe that politics centers on ideas. There are those who are indifferent to ideas and think that politics centers on maneuver. And there are those who hate ideas and regard them as nothing but a menace. Uh, our speaker and indeed our chairman today are outstanding examples of the first kind of politician and conservative. I'm sure they're right. It is ideas which determine the history of mankind and the history of human society. We know that the speaker has already shown that ideas can be turned into events, can be turned into realities. His contract with America not only produced a great election victory and a very remarkable election victory, but was also fulfilled. It changed the actual policy of the United States and changed the society of the United States and the prospect for the future of the United States in ways which were wholly to the advantage not only of the United States, but also of the rest of the world. And I believe that going even as far as the contract for America, that's say going to where his mind was in 1994, there is still a lot for us to learn in Britain. But now he is challenging us to look beyond that, to look to the future from where we now are. And he is right, I am sure, and I believe that we would all agree with this, <laughs> to think that we have to face very great changes, that we have to face very great challenges, that these challenges are real, that the world into which we are moving and the world in which we shall be living in the next century will be a different world. I am sure that the emphasis he puts on the developments of technology, on understanding the developments of technology, the emphasis he puts on scale, on the importance of small business as against big business, on the way in which small businesses are the way that ideas, technologies, opportunities can best grow, and certainly employment can, get, can best grow. On the idea of the low-cost state and the need not to take disproportionate shares out of what the citizen knows, that these are indeed ideas of great importance ideas which will be of value in all the debates over here, as well as in the debates in the United States. But what, if I may say so, I loved most about his speech, and admired most, was that throughout he was bringing together a profoundly felt and understood political philosophy with a profound sense of history. I think that politicians who have no philosophy or no history can never expect to take their nations forward. And I believe that what he has been saying to us is something which has great value for his nation and also great value for ours. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.